All right, congratulations. You're on part three. You've lasted through the boredom. Um, I hope you're getting something out of it. Um, here we're going to talk about uh, part three, phases of the moon, but we're going to talk about something a little bit different, talking about eclipses. And so if you recall from the slides that I've been showing you, um, a logical question uh, that I alluded to in part one was um, why isn't this considered an eclipse? And, you know, actually according to this drawing, then it would be an eclipse because the sun and the moon is lined up right with the earth. Uh, perfect alignment. Or if we were talking about this moon, that we would have the sun, the moon, and, I'm sorry, the sun, the earth, and the moon in complete alignment. And that's what happens with an eclipse. Um, but because of every time you look in a science book or you look on the internet, they need to make the scale of the distances between Earth and Moon and Sun so close that um, you really don't get a, an accurate pr picture of how it works in space. So I'm going to try to remedy that a little bit. So here, um, you know, it, it reads, a solar eclipse occurs on a rare occasion when Sun, Moon, and Earth in that order are lined up the moon casts a shadow on the earth. So here's uh, another diagram of, of the phases of the moon. And here's my moon. Um, here's the sun, of course, starting from the right. And if the sun, the moon, and the earth were completely lined up, what would happen is um, the sun's rays would be blocked by the moon, the moon would cast a shadow on the earth, and there would be a small area on the earth uh, that would be within its shadow. And so you would see something like this, and that would be a solar eclipse, where the, the sun is, is eclipsed by, by an object, here the moon. And so the moon is blocking out the sun. Um, a lunar eclipse, on the other hand, is where the moon is over here, uh, where you would normally, normally think of as a full moon, but it's lined up so perfectly that the sun rays come over, uh, the earth is directly in its path in a perfect alignment uh, to the moon and casts a shadow on the moon, so much so that the entire moon is pretty much cast in the shadow of the earth. And what we actually see is uh, the moon in a tint of orange or red. And um, if, if you check out Mr. Ambrose's room, he has some really great pictures of a uh, lunar eclipse, an actual lunar eclipse. Um, but this is a rare occurrence. And, um, you know, we don't, if, if, if it was drawn the way it is like this, we would see a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse each and every month. And that just isn't the case. And the reason uh, for that is that um, the moon is actually extremely small compared to the Earth and very, very far away. So um, here, and the other, I'm sorry, the other aspect of it is that the moon does not um, orbit the Earth in a flat plane. It, 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 it orbits in a five-degree angle, so it kind of goes up on one end and then down on the other, all right, which makes the alignment even more rare because of the, of the angle. So what we get is, if you look at this bottom part of it, the, the Earth and the Moon really actually very, very small compared to the Earth and really pretty far away. And this small five degree angle, given that it's so far away, puts the Moon pretty well above the plane of the Earth. Right? So here's the elliptical plane. For there to be uh, an eclipse, I'm sorry, the ecliptical plane, for there to be an eclipse, the moon would have to be in perfect alignment on this plane. And you can see the moon's up here. Here's arrows for the sun. And so um, the moon would cast a shadow, but it would cast a shadow parallel to the, the beams of light from the sun. And so if you follow the shadow all the way across, you can see clearly that the shadow would miss Earth by, by quite a ways. And, you know, here's the sign, here's a little reminder to shadow cast by the moon. All right, so um, the main reason, I guess, for um, eclipses not occurring as often as you might think is 
uh, because of the angle that the moon takes as it revolves around the earth all right not to mention the extreme size of earth compared to the moon um, a good way to represent that is if the moon was the size of a basketball then I'm sorry if the earth was the size of a basketball the moon uh, would be the size of a tennis ball and uh, if, if the moon was the tennis ball and earth was a basketball then the distance would be about I think 30 feet and so it, it really is um, uh, pretty far away from the earth when you when you think of it that way it's the problem is that in, in, in pictures on the internet you really just don't see that and so here you know here's a good depiction of um, the size of the sun compared to the size of the earth the size of the size of the moon all right so you can see how small how small the earth and moon is compared to the immense size of the sun um, the distances is not the scale but the pictures uh, the sizes of the sun moon and earth are, are supposed to be the scale so here is my my sun here's the moon and here's a situation where there would not be an eclipse because um, the size and and the angle that the, the moon rotates but if for some reason you know, at some point, on occasion, you get an instance where the moon is exactly lined up in between the sun and the earth. That's an instance where you would get an eclipse. Here, it would be a solar eclipse. And then the next situation, here's one where the moon's on the other side. Um, the earth is casting a shadow that would miss the moon completely, but in another part of the moon's orbit um, you might see a situation where it's completely perfectly lined up and we have sun earth and earth casting a shadow directly upon the moon and then we would have a lunar eclipse so I hope that kind of clears it up um, as to why we don't have um, eclipses each and every month and that the pictures that I've shown you like this does not really show eclipses. It's, it's really meant to show uh, the phases of the moon itself. So, hope you enjoyed the series. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, um, you know, flag me down at, at school and, and feel free to ask. Um, thanks for watching.